Hi guys, it is another soon to be sweltering hot summer day in early May here in the end times in Paradise in Garfield, Texas. And I have a lot on my plate today. I have my second interview for my new channel, Collapse Chronicles, with John Casty that I gotta be uh, heading into. And I got some house cleaning duties, so I'm just gonna do a few house Humpty Dumpty Tribe house cleaning uh, videos here today. Uh, but before I dive into those various, not rants, just, just videos about various subjects, uh, we're going to dive in, well not exactly the comment section for today's comment of the day. I'm just going to share with you most of a long email I received from Alert Tribes member Brother JJ. We have not heard from Brother JJ in 2018. He doesn't, he doesn't come out very often. He doesn't comment uh, on this channel. But every once in a while, I receive a long email from Brother JJ, and he has kindly uh, offered me uh, the opportunity to share this long, uh, more than a comment, it's more of a, his own rant. So we're going to dive in and hear from Brother JJ uh, out there in cyberspace. <clears throat> okay, I am 70 years old and I am a retired experimental physicist with a wide range of practical experience. A few years ago I started seriously studying, studying climate science and things immediately looked pretty bleak to me skip over some personal information and towards I had been sliding toward depression for quite a while desperately looking for a ray of hope what I found was Humpty Dumpty tribe is it any wonder that I enjoy your sick sense of humor so since I am a scientist with time on my hands and an inclination to study stuff, I spent a couple of years studying climate science and learning my way around the doomosphere. All this is not exactly new to me. I first became aware of the sustainability problem back in the 1970s. I was a dedicated apocaloptimist for 15 years. In 1989, I became convinced we were on the path to eventual destruction and were unlikely to swerve. I decided to simplify my personal life and get out there and enjoy the world while it lasted as much as possible at government expense. That kept me busy for the next 25 years. After a careful and thoughtful study of the situation on this planet, I have abandoned all hope. And there you go. For personal as well as scientific reasons, I was compelled to make a forecast. I only recently considered the possibility of sharing it with the tribe. Here is a rough outline a rough outline of how I think the future is going to go okay take it away brother JJ how is the future going to go climate instabilities and sea level rise are going to be worse than all but a few crackpots that would be you Hambone and most climate scientists now expect by 2030 there will be no doubt except in the minds of dedicated deniers and conservative politicians that something has gone dreadfully wrong 
The last time I looked, the UN projected a world population of 9.7 billion in 2050 and 11.8 billion in 2100. My own projections are 9 billion in 2050 and fewer than 1 billion in 2100. Fewer later on. Probably a lot fewer. I expect that environmental collapse will reduce population growth to near zero by 2050 and will begin to reduce the population itself soon after. I expect that financial collapse will destroy most of the world economy and electricity and, I'm sorry, uh, well, destroy most of the world economy and many local economies about the same time. In the last half of the 21st century, more than 90% of the world population will perish by war, famine, and disease, and the survivors will be mostly starving with no electricity and little fuel or medicine. The global temperature will continue to rise, and the climate will continue to become less hospitable for another century. Nevertheless, the elites will continue to extract and burn the last fossil fuels. Deserts will expand. Sea level will rise. Rivers and aquifers will dry up and agricultural lands will shrink. The oceans will become ever more acidic and will mostly die. And it doesn't get better for hundreds of years. By the end of the sixth mass extinction, there will be very few animals left on the planet that weigh more than 50 pounds, except possibly human livestock. In a few thousand years, the Earth will cool and enter the next ice age. If there are still any humans on the planet at that time, they will be lucky to have Iron Age technology and goats. I am a scientist. I study shit and figure it out. The situation has been thoroughly investigated by competent scientists and widely reported. The consequences of our current path are pretty clear. The probability that we will remain on this path for as long as it is physically, economically, and politically possible approaches certainty. Fueled by greed, ignorance, and fossil fuels, humans will destroy the planet. It is already too late to save the environment. It may be too late to save the humans. But probably not. I think the probability of survivors is high. It's not going to be unsurvivable everywhere. I think that an optimistic estimate is that the global population will drop by a factor of 1,000 from around a maximum of around 9 billion. The population will drop to less than 9 million. But that is an optimistic number. I'm thinking it will be lower at the height of the next ice age. There will be absolutely no accessible fossil fuels left by then. Agriculture will be pretty limited in the ice age climate. Today's medicine will not even be a memory. Things are going to be plenty tough for humans for most of the next 100,000 years. I recently saw a report from some research group that claimed the sustainable global, global population is 2 billion based on a European standard of living. I think that is too high, but I will accept it as a starting point. It is also based on a stable climate and a healthy ecosystem. Without those, the number is a lot smaller. It is also based on extensive use of fossil fuels. 
it assumes cheap, long-range shipping and industrial agriculture. It assumes the continuation of global industrial economy and political stability on a global scale, capitalism, and planting eating as usual. All this is, all that is just not going to happen. We are about to find out what the real sustainable number is without abundant fossil fuels, after an economic collapse, during a global climatic catastrophe lasting for hundreds of years, followed by an ice age. I predict a few million tops. I wouldn't be surprised if the population is less than one million. I would be surprised if it is more. I would be surprised if it is none. Humans are plenty tough when you strip off that veneer of civilization, environmental collapse, and population bottleneck is the way to bet. I spent a long time trying to con convince myself that the above scenario might not be as likely as it seems to be. Maybe there is a way out of this that I just can't see. What I wound up doing is convincing myself that the looming collapse is completely inescapable. We are so fucked. Our way of life will come to an end, and most of the global population will die in horrible ways. Scattered, surviving communities will slowly die out or adapt and evolve in an impoverished world. The planet will no longer be dominated by humans. There is no way around it. Bummer. Smoke them if you got them. Okay, I probably should wrap up there, but that's, since he went on, let's, let's go on with a few extra thoughts. That was his, his main thing he wanted to talk about. But he's got a few flotsam and jetsam thoughts he wanted to share as long as he's here. I'm going to take this opportunity to make a few of the comments I have previously resisted posting. I am eternally grateful to Paul Beckwith for his outstanding explanations of everything relevant to climate change. It's like he did it all just for me. But he is still an apocaloptimist. I am not convinced that geoengineering offers any long-term hope. We have to get gigatons of CO2 out of the atmosphere and the ocean, and that takes energy. The only process we know that can possibly do the job on a large enough scale is plants using sunlight, and we are killing most of the plants. Moving on from Paul Beckwith, about the third time I heard that guy, about the third time I heard that guy talk, not Paul, that other guy, uh, I knew he was an asshole. I am an expert in many things, and one of them is asshole scientist. I give him credit for his accomplishments in spreading the word, but I am a real scientist, and that guy is not up to my standards, and besides, I don't like assholes. I have watched a lot of Kevin Sandbloom and Sandy uh, Shellis from Environmental Coffee House. Sandy, I love you, but I am afraid it's going to be a lot worse than you can let yourself believe. Kevin, it is going to be every bit as bad as you fear it might be. I really like Robert Jensen. I almost wrote you the first time you interviewed him. If it weren't for a Humpty Dumpty tribe, I'd never, I would never have heard of Robert Jensen or a lot of other people. 
Finally, I want to say most sincerely that Hambone Little Tail speaks for me. Hambone has said everything that I wish I could have said. He continues to voice my views and opinions and attitudes more effectively than I ever could myself. I told my wife that I had hired a professional with talent and an audience to express my opinions and my outrage and despair. So, Hambone, I... Uh, I don't send you donations. I am sending you partial payment for services rendered. I only wish I could afford what you are worth. And, and guys, just so you, uh, just, just so you understand, uh, Brother JJ is one of my three uh, angels. Uh, Brother JJ has paid his dues to, uh, to Humpty Dumpty Drive ten times over. Uh, just, just so, in case you misunderstood it, uh, he, he was joking. Uh, he does not donate to Humpty Dumpty Tribe. He pays for services rendered. Oh! <clears throat> By sending you partial payments for services rendered, I only wish I could afford what you are worth. Oh! By the way, I want to point out that Hambone speaks for me in every respect except, except when he says the word pussy. I do not share his relish for that word. I do share his appreciation for actual pussy, but my experience has been that using that word has never helped me in getting any actual pussy. So, I avoid it. All of which is academic for me now, and soon will be for you too, Hambone. Meanwhile, I am cheering you on. Any pussy you can get now will be both a miracle and a comfort to you in your old age. Well, I can certainly say uh, it will be a miracle, uh, any pussy that Hambone Littletail ever gets in his life. Whether it will be a comfort uh, remains to be seen. And with that, I am going to leave the Doomosphere in your capable hands. I'll be watching and throwing you a few bucks now and then. You can use any of this any way you want. I probably won't be commenting much. I am happy to read the comments of other tribes members and usually find my opinions quite well represented there. Thanks for doing what you do. And Brother JJ, thank you for doing what you do. And I'm not just talking about your very kind uh, donations to keep this weird little uh, social experiment on the air for another day, but thank you for doing what you do by offering commentary like this and keeping up the good fight. And I uh, hope to meet up with you again. I had the pleasure of spending a, a very nice afternoon with Brother JJ uh, watching the Sand Hill Cranes coming uh, home to roost in New Mexico last fall. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to wrap up this extended comment of the day and got about three more uh, short videos. There will be no depressed collapsitarian whine of the day because I've got a lot to do before uh, my next interview for Collapse Chronicles. Bye, guys.